And then there was trouble. So, Gage when Percy happened, and uh, blah, blah, blah. yeah, y you know the deal. Here we go. Let's tell you how we made the model. Woo! First of all, for the the fu the, the, fu the funny, funny, funny people out there, if you didn't know, Gage when Percy's chassis is made using a BR80. This this thing, this German train thingy from like 1980 something. First of all, I want to say, cutting this BR-80 chassis was not easy. It's not like a first Fisher Price tool set. This was a pain in the bunker. So like, you gotta cut off all the little extrudy bits on the BR-80 chassis, and then, and, and then you gotta cut it in half, and then you split it that thing down the middle. Then you gotta cut it like at an angle, and then you just put it back together, you JB weld that, and then, whoa, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pierce the chassis! Then they also forgot you gotta cut down the side runs and make cross heads and then cut more valve gear down. But you, you know, I'll have someone else explain that later on. Onto the body shell. The body shell is measured off the Percy prop and put together by Kobe Thomas Modeler on Twitter. This beefy green man was printed on the Ender 3 and obviously lots of sanding and putty and paint and crying at the end of each day. Pretty much a rinse and repeat thing. You put putty, you sand, you put putty, you sand over and over again until it's nice and smooth. Maybe put a coat of primer here and there to see your imperfections, but that's about it. Oh boy, then for the part that everybody loves, the iMac. The iMac was custom made in Tinkercad. Just kind of a guesswork due to my already acknowledged iMac knowledge and pretty much put together stuff from servos into them and tested it out. One thing I gotta mention was Percy's iMac did not work at all in the beginning. We had to go through so many different servo like arrangements, figure out where to put the servos in the tanks, and a lot of trial and error until the iMac started running a bit more smoother. After getting the iMac sorted, we went back to working on Percy's body shell. It was pretty much a rinse and repeat of what I said previously. After getting Percy pretty much pretty smooth, it was time for the paint. Oh boy, the paint. Percy's footplate was painted in Ford red and the footplate remained gray. We tried a Tamiya green for the body shell and it was so vibrant and too green, it, it looked like a highlighter. He was lined and then we weren't satisfied so we picked out a darker green, re-sanded re him, primered him, painted him all over again and it looked a thousand times better than before. Now with good paint, Percy was lined and completed for the most part. We painted up his toolboxes in the little leaf spring detail and he really came to life then. And with that, that leaves us with how Percy looks today. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little something new about Percy. Thanks for watching.